In this lesson, we're going to examine spherical coordinates. So we're used to rectangular coordinates. So let's start with our usual representation. So this is in the X direction. This is in the Y direction. This is in the Z direction. You're going to go ahead and place a point P in space here. And this point P will be the point X, Y, Z. And we want to go ahead and we want to project that point down into the X, Y plane. So where is the point X, Y, zero? So projecting it down into the X, Y plane, we get this point Q, we'll call it. Q is the point X, Y, zero. So we've taken the point P and we've projected it down into the X, Y plane. And we have that point Q, which is X, Y, zero, as you see from our picture. Now, what do we want to do with this? We want to ask ourselves, what is the distance from the origin to that point P? And that defines our coordinate called rho. So rho is the distance from the origin to the point. Distance in three dimensions from the origin to the point. So if that's the case, we can see from Pythagoras that x squared plus y squared plus z squared will equal that distance rho squared. So here is rho, that's the distance of that little line segment. So rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. If you like, then rho is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Now we see x, y, zero. And what I want to do is I want to draw in what r would be. So looking at it here, if this is x and this is y, what is r and what is theta? So we know from previous work with polar coordinates with cylindrical coordinates, Here's R, and here's theta. So what do we know from that? Well, certainly x squared plus y squared is R squared. That may be important. But theta is one that we use for, cylindrical, for spherical coordinates. So we establish the fact that rho was the distance from the origin to the point. Theta here is the same theta that is used in cylindrical coordinates or polar coordinates. For which point? For the point x, y, zero. So if that's the case, we recognize, of course, that the tangent of theta is y over x, looking at this picture. which will then tell me what theta is, theta is simply defined as what? The inverse tangent of y over x. So if I know x, y, and z, I can get rho. If I know x, y, and z, I can get theta. So rho and theta are the first two coordinates that we need in spherical coordinates. The third one is phi. So how do we define phi? So here's a more precise picture. So you'll notice again, there's our theta that we use in polar coordinates down here. Here is rho, but what is phi? Phi is the angle made with the z axis and that vector from the origin to the point P. So it's that vector that, that is made with the North Pole in essence. So looking at our picture, where is phi? Phi is the angle from z to rho. So we see we have the distance here z. We can pick this up and move it here and say that this is our point z. There's phi. There's rho. What is the third side of the triangle? That's what we need to think about. 
And you need to first see where R is. So again, R is the same R that is in the XY plane as we use for polar coordinates. So here is R in the picture down in the XY plane, but we take that same R and put it up here. That's what it will be for that other triangle. So I have a triangle where one side is R, one side is Z, one side is rho, and one side is phi. But I want to go ahead and try to draw that in two dimensions so it's a little easier for us to see. So here's our triangle. And what is the simplest way for us to get phi? If we're looking at this, we have three sides of the triangle, Z, R, and rho. If we stick with Z and rho, the trigonometry function we want to use is the cosine. So the cosine of phi is the adjacent over the hypotenuse is z over rho. So if that's the case, then what does that give us for phi? Phi then is the inverse cosine of z over rho. So we can go ahead and clarify that over here. So it's the inverse cosine of z over rho, but what is rho? Rho is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Now, I don't really encourage you to memorize these facts. I think it's much better to get them from the geometry and the trigonometry. So there's our formula for rho. Here's our formula for theta. And here's our formula for phi. Remember, rho is the distance from the origin to the point. Theta is the same theta as used in polar coordinates. And what is phi? Phi is the angle. between the z-axis and the vector, if you will, that starts at the origin and ends at the point P. That's what that phi is. So in essence, phi is similar to what? Phi is similar to latitude and theta is similar to longitude. So we saw how to find rho theta and phi if we know x, y, and z, but how do we reverse that? So if we know rho theta and phi, how then do we find x, y, and z? So the uh, triangles will be the key to that discussion. So let's take a look at our most recent triangle. So we have z here, rho here, r here, and phi. So this time we know rho, theta, and phi. How can we get x, y, and z? Well, using that same equation we did most recently, the cosine of phi is the adjacent over the hypotenuse is z over rho. So rho cos phi equals z. So that's checked off. But how about we also get r? That's probably wise. So if that's the case, what are we going to say? We're going to say the sine of phi is r over rho. So rho sine phi equals r. Rho sine phi equals r. Now, we need to find x and y, but what do we know? This is our other triangle. We already know theta. So we have x here, we have y here, we have theta here, and we have r here. So if we want to take a look at x, we could say cosine of theta is what is x over r. So r cos theta equals x. But what is r? r is rho sine phi. So rho sine phi cos theta equals x. And similarly for y, we could say sine of theta is y over r. So r sine theta equals y. But what is r? r is rho sine phi. So rho sine phi sine theta 
equals y. So again, that gives us three rules that if we start with rho theta in phi, we can compute z, we can compute x, and we can compute y.